in the summer of 2020, I had reached a breaking point with being locked in my house with nothing else to do. Overcome with the lack of expression and socialization at the time, I took to my Facebook to see if I could try and get some sort of decent conversation started and have it focused on my favorite thing in the world. And no, I'm not talking about butts and beer, even though that's a pretty good guess. Music. My name is Vox. You're listening to Over Opinionated Podcast. Here is my review, the first of which to lead to many, of Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell's album, United. This was originally posted on July 11th of 2020. I recently saw a video that was circulating around Facebook. A screen was divided into two parts, one side saying no, as in knowing something, and the other saying don't know, obviously not knowing something. Playing was popular pop and R&B songs from the early to mid 2000s. Two teens that were in the video were all standing on the don't know side for every single song. And the comment section of the video was basically saying something along the lines of, how do these kids not know these artists? They are still relevant to this day. We have problems in America. We need to teach people about music history. But while listening to this album, I couldn't help but think, would people be saying that, that we need to teach music to our children, even the albums that influenced the early 2000s music? Probably not. Recently, I have truly been trying to not insult people as much for their difference in music of taste and opinions, as we are all entitled to those opinions, right? Not to mention that we could use a little more love in the world, especially following 2020's events. Now, obviously this was written in 2020, but I think it's still pretty pretty relevant. It's blatant themes in this album that make me think that though. I will say, if you do not know at least three songs off this album and dare to post on a public forum that we need to educate America on music, you'll be insulting me and I will be insulting your intelligence and opinions. Ain't no mountain high enough if I could build my world around you and your precious love are three songs that I think shaped this album into what it is. And those are the three songs I'm talking about. These songs are a staple for what this album is and they're easily recognizable to this day. United was the first of three LPs that would be released by Marvin Gaye and Tammy and it is easily the best out of all three of them. Trust me, I listened to the other two, um, mainly because Spotify just kept playing when I was finished with this album, but I, I rest my case. It's still, the, it's still the best. The album starts off with Ain't No Mountain High Enough, which went on to be the first single from the album, and I think we could all argue that it is the love song. Like this, When you think of a love song, this is it. The only one. When someone says, play a love song, this should be the song that comes to mind. I don't normally do a track-by-track track review unless the album is so impactful to me that I need to do that. Unfortunately, this album isn't one of those albums, but I'll be kind of going as, as far down the line as I can, but I'll probably jump around a bit. If I could build my world around you as the next toe-tapper, and it's the stick-out track on the album. With lyrics like, pretty flowers would grow wherever you walk, and over your head would be the bluest skies. I'd take every drop of rain and wash your troubles away. How could you not smile and call it a love song? For those of you who know me personally, which there probably isn't many of you listening at this point, you know that I am not a very lovey-dovey kind of guy. I'm very private. But I can appreciate the Motown scene pushing the love and positivity through the great duet harmonies that is featured on this song. And they're easy to follow too. Peaceful, sounding guitars, keys, horns. Although known for keeping their relationship as professional as they could, Marvin and Tammy were practically inseparable, being described as brother and sister at some point. But that is the best thing about love. It can be shown in many, many ways. The only problem I start to have when listening to Motown is that when I am not specifically paying attention, every song starts to blend together. My guess is that it's just the simple sounds. Everything kind of, you know, flows and moves together. It's like when your mom or dad catch you listening to rap music, or in my case, metal. They said the same thing. It all sounds the same. It's just someone screaming into a microphone, or it's someone, you know, mumbling over a, a heavy bass track. I, I get it to an extent. 
the song structure as far as music go is is you know pretty similar for example your precious love hold me oh my darling two can have a party all start in the same pattern bass line accompanied by another piano or horns followed by drums yes they all sound different as they are different songs and in different keys and in different time signatures but the structure of the song is all the same that being said it doesn't mean that these songs are bad or sound the same when i'm actually listening to them it's just on my third listen through of the album i started to notice you know i was missing a couple of songs if i wasn't paying attention luckily we get a little bit a little bit of a break um, from the typical song structure when we reach the eighth track on the album little old boy little old girl old 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 no old O-L-E, oh, little old girl, little old boy, vice versa, you know, flip it around. This track is a bit of a shake-up as the track kicks off with some loud, piercing horns that masks the bass and the keys, acting more like a support to the intro instead of being in the intro itself. The drums and the bass push the song along nicely and put the song in, I think, my top three of the whole album. The song has one issue, and it's probably due to the way that the world has changed and how we've changed with it. Someone referring to themselves as a little old girl or a little old boy is kind of cringy to me. It's just different tongues and different you know, way that we, we speak. It's, it's completely changed from then and now, which I totally get, but you know, hearing someone referred to themselves as that eh, doesn't sit right. And I know what you're thinking. The music was not as popular in 2018 to 2020 as it was back then, but, you know, it's, it's how it goes. Can you imagine how cringy it's going to be in 50 years when we hear some mumble rapper calling a woman a thought or God knows what else they say on tracks because I don't even listen to that kind of music? I would dare to say that Little Old Boy, Little Old Girl is the last song that was an attention-grabbing song for me on the album the last four songs although good with an arguable exception of sad wedding are more of what we have heard in the first half of the album good music but easy to lose track of as i mentioned before for those who don't know my reviewing and rating systems I i'll give a quick summary before i go into it at the end of my discussion of an album or or an artist whom whatever i may be reviewing i try to do as fast um, as I can, a little, you know, a little bit of uh, a throwback to everything I've said, um, stuff I enjoyed, stuff I didn't enjoy, and I'll be doing that and explaining this through all of my reviews. It's kind of a staple that I always kind of throw into my reviews. The verdict is that Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell were both taken from this world way too soon. It's just how it is. But in the time that we did have with them, in the time that they were here making music, they truly made some things that stand out and they are definitely riding against the test of time and they need to be showcased and I think they always will be. Although sometimes repetitive and a little boring, the album was made in 1967 and I think it's a masterpiece. Lovely vocals from both of them, easy to dance and tap your foot to, especially with the drums. Happy uprising keys and horns that are sure to send waves of euphoria through your ear holes. And I'm not even kidding you. Put this song on, sit in a dark room, close your eyes, and just imagine the world in which this was played on television, on the radio, and how people reacted to it. Most importantly, there's a message that I think that the world really needs in 2020 and in 2022. Love. Each track on this album has a message of love in some way or another, and I truly don't think that we get enough of that th these days. Sure, when people go, oh, we made a, a YouTube video or an Instagram post or a TikTok about how good things still happen in this world, it blows up. That's a reflection on what's happening right now. Too much evil is pushed forward into the media, in front of our faces. Fear is stricken through all of us. Can you imagine if... There was a good thing that happened every single day that made the news. I think we'd all be different. When was the last time we got an album that had a track that not only won a Grammy, but had a single place in the top 150 singles of all time? Think about that. United by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell easily gets an 8 out of 10 from me. 
And I encourage every single person to go and listen to that album. No matter what background you're from, no matter what music you like or dislike, take a minute and absorb it. Thanks so much for listening. I hope I didn't stumble too much. I haven't been posting, as you probably know, if you are a follower of the channel. And if you stumbled across this in some other way, I apologize if any of it sounded a little whack. It's been a long time since I've sat in front of a mic by myself and talked for a little while. Everything's a little scripted. Everything's a little off the hook. I'm trying not to make it sound robotic, and I hope that it came across that way. If it didn't, well, stick around. Give me a subscribe. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Things I should improve on. Things you're looking forward to hearing. A review that you might like to hear. I would really appreciate that in any way, shape, or form, even if it's a negative comment. Because let's be real, everyone likes to poke the bear, and we all learn from the negative to be positive. I'm not always a positive person, but it's what it is at this point. My name is Vox. This is Over Opinionated Podcast. See you next time.